Hey, everybody. Fascinating chat today, diving into the world of conversational AI and AI agents more and more with David from OpenStream.ai. David, how are you? Good, Evan. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. Thanks so much for joining. You guys are doing incredible work in this field, very crowded field of AI platforms these days. So I'm really delighted to have you here. I have so many questions before that. Maybe introduce yourself a little bit about your bio and who is OpenStream.ai. Sure, sure. Uh, thanks for uh, the opportunity. Um, so my name is David Stark. I'm Chief Marketing Officer here at OpenStream AI. Uh, I've been in B2B technology for over three decades, uh, working for large Fortune 500 companies and uh, uh, working for uh, young viral startups like OpenStream AI. OpenStream AI is actually not... Uh, as much of a startup as you would think. The company's actually been in business for over 20 years at the bleeding edge of what's possible. Um, we sell a platform called Eva, our enterprise virtual assistant, uh, which is a plan-based multimodal conversational AI. And we can get into that in more detail for sure. Yeah, absolutely. And what a fascinating time in this space. Uh, but there's also a very crowded field of AI platforms. Mm -hmm. Um, particularly in the uh, voice AI arena. And you have something yeah. called neurosymbolic AI that, that uh, really makes a difference. Maybe describe your unique uh, position in this space and your technology. Yeah, yeah. So we uh, have been fortunate in that over the past couple of years, we've been recognized by uh, large analyst firms for being the sole visionary in the magic quadrant for our, our space, right? And why is that? Well, we're a plan-based multimodal conversational AI. So plan-based means that our system is smart enough to collaborate with the end user. So it identifies what problem you're trying to solve, right? And then it develops a plan in the background based on the beliefs that it has about what you're trying to achieve and collaborates with you to help you to achieve that goal throughout the course of your conversation in a very natural and frictionless environment. So what do I mean by that? This is where multimodality comes into play. So in the same way that you and I are looking at each other right now and having a conversation, and I can see the expressions on your face, the position of your eyes, uh, whether or not uh, your, your voice is happy, sad, et cetera, uh, or even if you're using hand gestures as I'm doing because I'm a native New Yorker kind of thing, I can't control myself. Mm -hmm. Our system actually combines all those different multimodal inputs, speech, vision, text, gestures, et cetera, and, uh, tries to ascertain and understand what you're conveying in real time. That really helps to differentiate us from most any other uh, environment that's uh, delivering conversational AI in that we're able to combine this information, these inputs in real time. And in turn, this becomes a friction-free environment for a customer. You don't have to learn how to talk to the system. The system already knows how to speak human and understands you and makes it easier for you to achieve your goal when it's all said and done. Wow, phenomenal. So many of us have had interactions with voice box and various degrees mm -hmm. of uh, satisfaction with those out in the real world today. So talk about why yeah. emotion and personality and you know multimodal interaction makes it more relatable and um, engaging for the user, the caller. Sure. Well, we can all pretty quickly think about a bad customer service experience that we've had lately. Pick your favorite industry du jour. Uh, and you call in and you're dealt with either a, a what I'll call a decision tree. You know, press one to do this, press two to do that, et cetera, which we all immediately get frustrated with and start whacking on that zero to try to talk to a human <laughs> being. Well, why? Right? Why do we want to talk to a human being so bad? Well, we want somebody that actually takes the time to understand what is really frustrating me or what I'm really trying to get achieved. And you want to deal with somebody who might have the authority to affect the change or explain to you why that change simply is impossible, regardless of the circumstance. Um, our AI is uh, one of the key steps of, our, of, of building an environment for our clients with our AI is actually ingesting the knowledge that is contained within the entire enterprise. And if you're thinking about how you would use a voice AI to solve that problem, instead of dealing with a classic conversation tree, um, you can actually uh, make a pretty powerful experience that dynamically renders information on the fly based on everything it knows. So said differently, right? 
Why does empathy matter? Why do emotions matter? If you're calling in to an insurance provider and something has, let's say, been stolen, right? Um, the last thing that you want to run up against is a system that keeps asking you, please key in your policy number. What is your birth date, <laughs> right? Uh, those things are, are, are frustrating and they're maddening because you just want to really report this issue that, that came up. Um, most of those systems aren't empathetic, right? Whereas our system, when you engage, if you call into one of our voice agents that's been deployed and our system speaks over 60 languages, 140 dialects, right? Uh, when you call into our system, if you have that same situation, the system would say, I'm really sorry to hear that. Are you okay? Right. Which is a vastly different way to engage with a company's digital representation than dealing with a push one for this, push two for that. Right. Um, and you can actually go through this discussion and the system knows everything about your insurance policy, what is covered and what isn't isn't covered and can actually tell you uh, why it's providing an answer, which is also pretty unique in regard to these things. So if you go through and you say, my phone has been stolen out of my car, uh, and uh, the system knows here are the five things that our corporate policy needs to have filled. These blanks need to be filled in uh, to help you to get to, to determine if you're going to get paid back for this phone or not. And one of the first questions it might ask you is, hey, uh, where was your phone when it got stolen? Because in your policy, in a detail, in a line that none of us have ever read before, it actually says, well, if the phone was in plain sight, no coverage. Whereas if the phone was uh, hidden in the glove box, covered, right? Um, if the system wants to know, and, and you ask, I'm sorry, if the system asks that question, you can also ask it, why do you need to know that? And the system, because it's ingested all this knowledge, can actually tell you uh, very transparently, actually, this is in your policy. It's line number three. And you're covered for up to five hundred dollars against your deductible. So that's yeah. why I need this information. Wonderful! Well, wouldn't that be amazing as a customer? Um, and how do you deal with the kind of tricky issue of AI hallucinations with large language models? We've all experienced that firsthand, playing with ChatGPT and other tools. What's your approach here? Sure. Well, um, when you're talking about a neurosymbolic system like ours. Uh, if I really net it down, it comes down to a trusted source of truth, right? So you train a model to support the use case that the company is investing in. And in turn, in there, you're going to put some guardrails. So again, in the insurance example, uh, you might be uh, using an LLM to help generate some of the dialogue under the covers, right? Or you might be using the LLM to interpret the world around it and the world that it needs to communicate to. We use LLMs and a host of other technologies to, to make this all hum. Uh, but if you rely completely on the LLM, you can convince it to lie. So in other words, hey, you're gonna pay, you just told me you're gonna pay my insurance claim, right? And the system be like, no, I didn't. And he'd be like, no, no, you just told me you're gonna pay my insurance claim because you said this is covered. Oh yeah, you're right, I'm sorry, I'm corrected. That's simply not the case. So we have this kind of these guardrails up to to validate uh, this information and to ensure that what it's telling you is something that the company is going to stand behind. That it's in a uh, you know kind of a, a locked vault, if you will. And these comparisons and contrasts are made continually in real time to ensure that there are no lies. In a neurosymbolic system like ours, uh, hallucinations are, are are greatly greatly reduced or completely eliminated, and, and we tend to say more completely eliminated what's all said and done. Um, so you can't get the system to lie. You can't get the system to give you free tickets to Hawaii kind of thing um, just because you ask nicely or you ask nicely three times, right? The system knows. And uh, because of the highly regulated industries that many of our clients are in, uh, they tend to not want to get sued. Um, so they really appreciate the fact that our system um, is, is effectively hallucination free. Oh, fantastic approach. And when it comes to designing an AI agent, how do you think about reflecting a brand's, you know, unique personality or, you know, unique voice, pun intended? What's the yeah, yeah. process there? Uh, yeah, every, uh, every client is unique um, and every client has unique use cases. But we work very closely with the clients to ensure that uh, the 
voice of the brand, quite literally, to pick up on your pun before, your, your, your pun before is in fact in place. So if you're talking about exclusively voice agents, we want to make sure that we understand the personality of your brand. Are you a happy brand, a very serious brand, a casual brand, mm -hmm. or something in the middle, right? Um, so we work with you to choose a voice, male, female, uh, accent, non-accent, uh, et cetera, right? And figure out, and what language, of course, or languages that you need to support to have meaningful conversations and dialogue with your end users. Um, if we're talking about uh, virtual agents that are deployed on a website, so not just voice, but text, even the responses and tone of the text that comes across needs to reflect your brand. And is it very formal responses or be casual responses or we having talking about the weather? How, how far do you want to go in, in tailoring this experience? If we're talking about AI avatars, uh, which is something else that we do, or digital twins of human experts, uh, then we need to know what do you want this thing to look like? right? What do you want it to, to look like? Do you want to look like your founder? Do you want to look like your best customer service uh, representative? Or do you want it to be a male, female, uh, et cetera, uh, representing this particular region of the world uh, on screen kind of thing? And again, how do you want them to carry themselves? That's in addition to all the other things like, you know, color palettes and all those other kinds of things. So it fits in the UX of your experience overall. But uh, we try to work with the teams to get that right before it deploys. That being said, once it's in the wild, you never know till you really know, right? Uh, and that's where we work with the clients to uh, to refine and fine tune those experiences to be sure that we're picking up on all the right intentions and that we are responding in the right way, that we actually have access to all the data that's required to carry on this meaningful conversation. And then where there are uh, exits uh, that we know when we should drive something out. So let's go back to that insurance experience, right? insurance experience. Maybe you're calling with a different claim. Maybe your home has been infected by a hurricane and everything has been just kind of destroyed, right? Again, this is where empathy comes into play. This is where uh, the personality of the brand comes into play in this circumstance. This is where you may not, you, the, the AI may need to be told or, or, or the experience may need to be guided in such a way that you say, if somebody's coming in, coming in with this kind of claim, we want to get them over to a human being because a human being is gonna be better suited to address this kind of incident. Because maybe you're reporting a loss, maybe a total loss of yeah. your home, maybe a death in your family, right? Maybe something along those lines, right? And those are things that you don't wanna deal with an AI for probably as a human being. And we wanna get them over to those skilled resources uh, as, as quickly as possible. But for the mainstream questions, you know, 95% of the time kind of thing, an AI can be at the front lines and really drive containment for these businesses uh, and free up their human beings uh, to focus on those um, more intimate moments where, where personal human care is, is needed and required. Yeah, understood. Great uh, philosophy there. And do you care to share any real world examples of your AI agents you know, in customer service or customer support of different uh, kinds. Uh, I know there's a lot of, of trials and, and uh, you know, early deployments happening, but where are you in this process? Yeah, we, uh, we serve, you know, global enterprises. Uh, we work with some really large global uh, insurance companies, banks, uh, various financial institutions, uh, automotive manufacturers, and everybody in between. Uh, the nature of our business is such is that many, 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 if not all of those clients consider our capabilities a differential advantage for them. Uh, so unfortunately for us and for me as a marketer, we don't always get to talk about them out loud. Um, but I can tell you we've been really fortunate in the, in the kinds of clients that we get to collaborate with every day to help them to bring these innov innovative experiences to their customers, their, their external users as well as to their employees, right? Our, our solutions are helping uh, both of those worlds to uh, drive better results using uh, conversational AI experiences. Yeah, I love that. Uh, the employee experience, often sort of the uh, redheaded stepchild of the enterprise. And maybe talk about that, how you know, mm -hmm. you're know you helping businesses make better decisions with AI co-pilots. You know, it's not easy to be an employee at a big company many mm -hmm. times. Uh, what sort of uh, tactics are you using there? Yeah, yeah, you're you're, um, you're you're singing my song, Evan. I had worked for a large Fortune 50 company before with a few hundred thousand employees, and 
sometimes when you're calling into that help desk, at least at that time, you, we would uh, sometimes call it the helpless desk. You know, what are you doing for me? <laughs> right. Um, we try to resolve that issue uh, by building these experiences, uh, co-pilots and uh, just formalized uh, virtual assistant experiences where uh, these users can call into a help desk and say, you know, I'm having a problem with my Mac configuration today. Something's not working kind of deal. Um, and you can have a conversation just like that. You don't have to go through a knowledge base and go digging on your own. Uh, you don't have to call into that internal uh, support number, that helpline, and push all the buttons and eventually get to talk to somebody who may not even really be very incentivized to support you personally or to care about you and your sense of urgency. Instead, our AI agents are available 24-7, 365 days a week um, to support you. And as long as these, we train these agents and the, these AI agents in the same way we train our external facing agents. There's an ingestion of knowledge that's critical to informing what these agents can actually do for their users, in this case, employees. Um, and we can use these systems to, again, do the classic help desk scenarios. We can do it for uh, decision support assistance. So tell me about, again, going back to the insurance example, uh, internal user might be like, hey, uh, tell me about all the clients that are going to be impacted by this forthcoming weather event in you know, Texas kind of deal, right? And now of these, of these customers that are in Texas that are going to be affected, how many of them have adequate coverage up to, you know, pick your favorite number, half a million dollars or whatever, right? Um, how are we doing for customer support agents that are available to actually mm -hmm. answer the phones during this event kind of deal? How long is the event expected to stand? Uh, now give me a graph of X and then send this information to my colleague over there, right? And you can actually do things like point to the information. So actually let me circle everybody in this town in Texas kind of thing. You think about what, how you're using a, a phone uh, to get Google directions. And now I know Samsung's come out with something where, uh, you can kind of circle a point on a map or circle a thing on an image. You can do the same thing with multimodality with our kind of environment. We've been doing this again for 20 years. So you can circle a point on the map, like, give me everybody who's going to be here around this river, because that looks like a high floodplain, according to our data, and send it to Bob and underwriting and make sure we're not going to lose our shirt doing this. Right. So those are just some very loosely stitched together examples of how we can help uh, employees just with the basics help desk scenarios, but also to drive some, you know, decision support sorts of systems or co-pilots in a very sophisticated and multimodal way. Fantastic. Um, you've been busy this summer. Uh, no rest for the weary. You have a big recognition from Ventana Research, you know, a group I admire. Tell us about that recognition and uh, what else do you have yeah. on the agenda for the summer? Yeah, no, thank you very much. Is it summer already? I swear it's only January. Um, <laughs> yeah, we were fortunate. We just announced this morning that we're a finalist for art for the artificial intelligence category in this uh, 17th annual Ventana uh, Research Awards for digital innovation. Um, you know, in in such a crowded AI space, as you started out our conversation, right? There's so many, so many different AI companies or companies that are now augmenting their core platforms with AI. Uh, we're just thrilled to be recognized and included with so many uh, great names in this arena. Um, and it's one of those uh, reflections uh, of, of how we are a, a small but mighty organization. So we're small in comparison to most of our typical competitors, yet we continue to punch above our weight. Matter of fact, uh, recently, we're also recognized on the E-Week uh, top of 150 AI companies, right, as, a, as an AI innovator with a number of other uh, household names in, in AI. Um, uh, we were recognized by Metrogy not that long ago for a top uh, virtual assistant provider. I think that's the name of the award, mm. but I can correct that for you. And a whole host of other things. We've been included in almost 50 Gartner mentions since uh, last year, right? In a number of different reports, hype cycles, emerging technology reports, the magic quadrant for our space and so forth. So uh, we're just working this summer and for the rest of the year and continuing to build the momentum for who Opstream AI is and what we can deliver on behalf of our clients. Uh, it's all about the clients. And for us, it's all about the quality and caliber of their relationships. You can have the most fantastic technology in the universe, right? And I've been in B2B technology forever. But if in our case, if you're not supporting our clients' ability to nurture and curate a quality relationship with their end users, 
then you failed, right? It doesn't matter how cool your tech is if you failed that customer's mission. And we focus every day on helping those customers to curate relationships with their end users um, using conversational AI. Oh, fantastic stuff. Your uh, brand is Eva um, for the agent itself. Add one end and you've got Evan. So maybe we should trademark that. Maybe the world needs an Evan bot. Um, hey. Who knows? That, that one day. Enterprise um, virtual assistant now. <laughs> I think that could be you, Evan. That, that, that's, uh, that's a good idea. I'll bring it to our product, uh, chief product officer. Uh, I, I, all kidding aside, how does, how does an enterprise get started on this journey, you know, this is a pretty new area for a lot of us. What is the process like, the baby steps, the, you know, ABC of, of, of kind of, of getting started? Yeah, I mean, with us, it's as easy as coming to our website, openstream.ai, and uh, requesting a demo or contacting us for, for more information. Mm -hmm. uh, we'd be happy to support folks. Um, you know, it really depends on where you are in your journey mm -hmm. in using conversational AI. Uh, the good news and bad news about something like ChatGPT uh, is that everybody from the backyard to the boardroom, as, I, as I've been saying, has touched it and they have kind of an expectation, right? Mm. Um, the reality is many companies have experimented and tinkered and tried using ChatGPT and other engines for sure uh, to help them to just, can't I just stand up a bot? Well, it's not really that easy um, if you're going to do it in, the, uh, in an enterprise-ready fashion. Uh, and we work very closely with our clients to help them to realize their vision for their particular use case. But it all starts with the knowledge ingestion uh, of it. So what data sources does your agent need to be trained on? Why is that important? Well, it's as important as whether or not you want to put interns on the front lines of your customer service teams, or do you want trained professionals? If you want trained professionals, you need to ingest a lot of knowledge from your organization, from your databases, from your websites, et cetera, uh, and make it available to the AI agent. Otherwise, you're just going to have an intern, and sometimes that doesn't go well. Well, I hear you there. Thanks so much for the insights and uh, the time. Really fascinating journey you're on, and um, follow OpenStream on, on social. They put out some great content. Thanks, David. Thanks for your time, and uh, look forward to catching up soon. Thank you, Evan. Appreciate the opportunity. Likewise. Take care, everyone.